Chapter 17 Varjak woke. Mesopotamia was gone. He was back in the secret alleys. It was late afternoon and a cold wind was blowing through his fur. It was shaking the fire escapes and drain pipes. Somewhere in the distance, a door was banging open and shut, open and shut in the wind. He could see Omar and Ozzy, Tam and Jess, huddled by the grills in the ground, trying to get some warmth. He turned to look for Holly, but she was gone. Outside the secret alleys, a door slammed shut and didn't open again. Things had gone wrong before, but Holly had always been there by his side. She was the one who knew what to do, and now she was gone. A deep shudder of grief, grief ran through him. There was a hole the shape of her inside his heart. It hurt more than any wound he'd ever known. Tam and Jess came over to him. They looked like they'd been crying. You all right, Far Jack? said Tam softly, placing a paw on his flank. He shook his head. He didn't want to talk. I know how you feel, said Tam. I miss her too, more than anything. And I miss my grandma, said Jess. Varjak's insides felt like snow. He could hardly meet their eyes. What could he tell them? I was the one you were counting on and I let you down. What happened to you back there, Varjak? said Omar. It was like you started shimmering and then you just quit. You didn't even try to fight Sally Bones. Varjak shivered. He could still see the cold in his whiskers, the bruising in his brain as he entered his mind. I tried, he said, but she, she was so strong. No one can fight her, mumbled Ozzy. Not even Varjak. The brothers looked beaten. We're finished, said Omar. What are we going to do? We're not finished, said little Jess fiercely. I still think Varjak can beat Sally Bones. She's scared of him. I don't think so, said Tam. But something must have got to her, or we would never have escaped. Varjak shivered. All he could remember was the ice blue eye burning into his brain, freezing him to his core. Outside the secret alleys, Cludge growled. Tam went to the railings. The scratchesses are out there, she gulped. Cludge is holding them off. But they look so fierce. What should we do, Varjak? He joined out at the railings and peered through to the alley outside. He saw Cludge backing away from the three Siamese cats, Eliza, Militia and Punisher. Scratch. They were as lean and mean looking as he remembered. Their claws glittered in the street light as they ghosted forward towards the rubble. Where is Varjak Paul? demanded Eliza. We know he's here somewhere. Just tell us where and we'll leave you alone. She flashed her claws at Cludge, but she stood his ground bravely and barked out another warning. Whoa, whoa! I hate those cats, hissed Omar, clenching his paws. They think they're so great, but we're stronger than them. I know we are. Let's fight them, said Ozzy. Far in the distance, a siren wailed. No, you mustn't, said Tam. What do we do, Varjak? I'm scared. Varjak's head hurt. It sounded like Scratch sisters were after him too. He'd better be ready to fight. He took a deep breath and counted. In, two, three, four. He reached for his power, but there was ice in his belly. Out, two, three, four. Ice in his brain. Come on, he told himself. Slow time, moving circles. I know how to do this. In, two, three three, four, but there was only fear in his heart. Out, two, three, four. Sally Bones's ice blue eye in his mind. It was like his lungs were shrieking. He couldn't breathe. He slumped to the ground, shaking, gasping for breath. The power wasn't there anymore. It was gone. Out in the alley, half a dozen cats crept up behind the Scratch sisters. Patrol from Sally Bones's gang. Street lights flickered in the freezing wind. Their shadows danced on the wall. Cludge edged away from them, crouching low in the rubble. Well, look at this, said the patrol leader. It's the Scratch sisters. What do you think you're doing in the city centre? Looking for Vijat Poor, said Eliza Scratch. That cat's an outlaw. Sally Bones wants him, dead or alive. He's ours. Dead or alive, thought Vijat. What difference does it make any more? I've lost Holly, I've lost Mrs Moggs, and now I've lost the power. I've got nothing left, absolutely nothing. 
If we find him, he's ours, said Eliza Scratch. This is neutral ground. The patrol leader shook her head. Nothing's neutral now. These are our streets and this is our law. Our claws are the only law we know, snarled Eliza. These streets have been free for everyone. Those days are over. The city belongs to our gang and there's nothing you can do about it. Eliza's tail thudded in the rubble. Are you disrespecting the Scratch Sisters? She said menacingly. Because Scratch Sisters never, ever broke down. Never, said Militia. Ever, said Punisha. They unsheathed their claws, their pale green eyes narrowed to slits. They were outnumbered, but they knifed forwards, bristling at the bones gang. Then it's time we taught you some manners, starred the pa patrol leader. The two forces came together in a frenzy, fighting savagely on the street. Dust and debris swirled around them. Clodge kept well away, but the momentum of the fight was already taking them out of the alley. Watching behind bars, it seemed to Vijack that Scratch Sisters were the better fighters. Their claws flashed with stunning speed, but the Bones Cats would win through their sheer weight of numbers. Three of them swarmed all over the Scratch Sisters, and she, cure, and she cursed violently, but they were gone from view round the corner before he could see what had happened. Tam groaned with relief. <sighs> that was so close. They'll be back, said Omar. We've got to get out of here. We can't leave the secret alleys, cried Tam, her fur and whiskers ruffled. It's the only place. Holly's always said so. Well, it's not safe any more, said Omar. We have to find somewhere else. Right, Varjack? Varjack couldn't answer. It hurt too much, even hearing Holly's name. Yet he knew Omar was right. They had to leave the secret alleys, or they'd, or they'd be found, and then Holly's sacrifice would mean nothing. He didn't want to fight, face the city streets again without his power, but he couldn't give up now. I have to go on, he told himself. I have to find somewhere safe for us all, because that's what Holly would do. He slipped out through the railings to find Cludge. The big dog was hiding in the rubble by an old cardboard box. box. Cludge scurred, he was muttering. Scary cats come back, want to go. One by one, the others followed Vajak out in the street, secret alleys, into the winter afternoon. So it's true, said Omar. You're really friends with the dog? That's right, said Vajak, huddling against the cold. Cludge, these are our new friends, Omar and Ozzy and Jessie. Cludge, barked the big dog, who wagged his tail at them. Jess smiled. But Omar and Ozzy's manes ruffled up. We can't go round with the dog, said Omar. He'll give us away. Doesn't he know any other dogs? Doesn't he have any family? Cludge whimpered. Varjak frowned. Holly had once asked the same questions. Then, as now, Cludge had looked like a frightened puppy. Cludge is our friend, said Tam. If he wants to come with us, he can come. But it's dangerous, said Omar, his eyes flashing. He's a dog, Tam. Varjak didn't like the way Omar was speaking. He could see confusion in Cludge's eyes. He could see his great ears drooping. He turned to the stocky cat. Didn't you hear what Tam said? Cludge is our friend, and I'm not losing another one. He's not being left behind. Omar stared at Varjak and then shrugged his rugged, rugged mane. Whatever, he said. All right, Cludge, said Cam. Tam, you're coming with us. The big dog grinned and wagged his tail. Friends, he barked. Varjak and his friends, he looked around. Where Holly go? Varjak opened his mouth to answer, but he couldn't. No words came out. She's somewhere else, said Tam quietly. Now, where are we going? No one had to, an answer to that. As they stood there in silence, the wind dropped and the city grew still. Daylight was fading. Soon, it would be night again. Jess cleared her throat. What about Grandma's tales, she said. The secret city where it's always warm and there's more mice than you ever can eat. A big smile crossed Ozzy's face. I've heard that tale, he said. We heard it when we were kittens. Remember, Omar? I remember, but I don't know anyone who's been there or even believed in it. Holly always believed in it, said Tam, and so did I, deep down. Did Mrs Moggs ever tell you where it was, Jessie? Jess shook her head. She just said there was some 
fearsome guardians outside, so cats haven't been there for years. Cludge know the place, murmured Cludge. Bad place, smelly. At first, first, Firejack thought he was joking, but Jess's eyes had lit up. That's right, she breathed. The most disgusting smell you can imagine. That's what Grandma said. Do you really know where the secret city, Cludge? asked Firejack. No, 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 said Cludge. Obviously regretting that he, but he'd mentioned it. Not there, not go back there. Back, said Firejack. You've been there before. He looked deep into Cludge's eyes and again saw a frightened puppy who didn't want to go to a place that was a clearly no joke. The sun was setting fast now. There wasn't much time left till nightfall. Cludge, he said, there's a place you know that cats never go. Please take us there. Cludge shook his head. No, Varjack, no. Please, said Varjack, we need your help. It's important. Cludge looked at him and his eyes looked away. Eyes full of pain and fear and sadness. Please, Varjak said again. Whatever's in that place, we'll face it together. You won't be alone, I promise. Not alone? Never. Come then, sighed the big dog. Come with Cludge. I wonder where it is. <laughs>